Welcome back to New Jack City. Oh wait! This isn't New Jack City. We have not been caught into the universe of a very bad, bad sci-fi movie. Oh no, oh no, oh no, 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 no. Shh. This is the Jackverse. And you are part of it. And you cannot escape. I have a rather special Jackverse plan today. It was inspired by a listener, or watcher, as it were, asking for me to review a piece of hardware that I use in my quest to write my words. Now, I don't usually do reviews because I find them to be, well, you know, they're a very personal thing, and I, I love doing reviews, but video reviews of stuff that I use, eh, eh, but, this particular piece of hardware is so absolutely fantastic that I had to say something. But I didn't want to just talk about that hardware. What I decided to do was I'm going to talk about the tools that I use to do what I do from start to finish. I thought that might be interesting to you. You might learn something. You might not. I don't know. Let's find out. Writing my books all begins with a laptop. Actually, it all begins up here. But uh, the medium by which I transmit the ideas into the consumable form is a laptop. Now, I have been using, up until recently, a uh, Chromebook Pixel, the 2013 release. And I decided that I was finally going to treat myself to the 2015 Chromebook Pixel. And, oh boy, oh boy. If you're looking for the single greatest laptop to have ever been created, look no further than the Chromebook Pixel 2015. Not only is it a, a work of, of engineering brilliance, it includes the best screen, the best keyboard, and the best trackpad for writers, period. End of question. Why? Um, some people would, would say, oh, well, 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 wait a minute, what about the Apple Retina display? Yeah. Here's the thing about the Pixel. The Chromebook Pixel has a different aspect ratio. Instead of it being, you know, her horizontal, very, you know, standard format, it stretches it out a little bit so it's taller than it is wider. And that benefits writers because you can see more vertical space. So I can look at more of my words than I could on a normal laptop. And the, the display is absolutely brilliant anyway. And the trackpad is astounding, as is the keyboard. So if you're looking for the best writing tool out there, head straight to play.google.com and pick up a Chromebook Pixel. Now, they are expensive, but they are worth every penny of it. Okay, so that's what I use to actually write my words. And the software, obviously, is, is Chrome OS, so I'm using Google Docs to write all of my words. There's a reason I like to use Google Docs to write all of my first drafts, because it's synced with all of my devices. And I also use a tool, a desktop tool called InSync. With that tool, what it does is it syncs everything in my Google Drive to my desktop. And it's, uh, you can use it across platforms. It's available for Linux, which is what I use, Windows, and Mac. So, but I don't stop there. No, I use a, a piece of software called Lucky Backup. And what I do with that is I back up that uh, Google Drive folder that InSync pulls down, I back that up then to an external drive. So at any given time, I have three copies of all of my data, and I know it's always up to date. I think that any writer out there can see why that would be beneficial. Now, as I said, I, I use Linux. I actually use elementary OS Freya as my operating system. It's a wonderful operating system. It's free, all the software, with the exception of InSync, which costs, I think, $15 per Google account. Everything I use is free. Can't beat free. It's also open source. Can't beat open source either. Okay, so I've written my document, right, on Google Docs. 
What do I do next? Well, uh, at one point, me and my editor, Sarah Marion, love her, um, we experimented with her using Google Docs as well. It, it does a really good job until your documents get really long, and then the comments and the track changes tend to start bogging it down a little bit. So. We went back to the normal routine where what I would do is I would, I would download the file from Google Docs into a format that LibreOffice could read. LibreOffice is the desktop word processor that I use. It's, a, it's actually an Office suite. It's better than Microsoft Office. It's also free. You can get it at LibreOffice.org, L-I-B-R-E-O-F-F-I-C-E dot O-R-G. Uh, download it. It's great. Um, but uh, I believe at the first, at first, Sarah was using Microsoft Office. Well, Microsoft Office is really, really, really bad at handling formats. In fact, they don't really follow standards very well. So the communication between Microsoft Office and LibreOffice left a little bit to be desired. And in fact, some of the track changes, especially the formatting, wound up getting lost. So I begged Sarah to please, would you mind using LibreOffice when you're editing my work? She did, and everything has been perfect so far. Okay, so I download from Google, uh, Google Drive, open it up in LibreOffice, and then I save it to the LibreOffice uh, format, ODT, Open Document Text. Um, and then I s send it off to Sarah. Sarah does her thing, and we go back and forth until, until we're good. And then what I do is I export from LibreOffice that file into an HTML document. That HTML document, once I format it and everything, I import it into Calibra, which is a, an ebook um, uh, uh, tool that you can edit ebooks and, and format. Um, it'll format other document formats. However, I find that the HTML format is far superior. Um, plus, the changes that you make on it actually stick. Uh, and then, after I've imported it in, I export it out to uh, Mobi format, and then I send it on to my beta readers. My beta readers read it and see what they think and send their feedback to me. I work that feedback into the LibreOffice document and possibly, if I have to, send it back to Sarah. And then we go back and forth. And then after that, do the same thing to proofreaders with the Mobi, the Calibra formatted Mobi. They do their thing, we go back and forth. And finally, when the document is complete, I go back, I, I, I delete the previous book from Calibra, I import it back in, and then I import the cover that I, because I create my own covers, I, the covers I create from GIMP, G-I-M-P, uh, GIMP.org, it's also free, and it's cross-platform. I create my covers in that, I import the cover and the HTML document into Calibra, export it out as Mobi, and then send it away to the Amazon, and they do their thing. Uh, also, uh, for the paperbacks, sort of the same process. The only difference is, is um, uh, CreateSpace does a better job with PDFs than they do anything else. So I use a tool called Scribus, which is a PDF tool, also free. I think it's scribus.net, um, and I, I, I create my cover for the paperback with Scribus. Now, with LibreOffice, you can take that formatted HTML document and export it as a PDF file directly. And then you can upload all that to Calibra. Okay, so now that everything is in the hands of Amazon and CreateSpace and all those people, um, the next step um, in the process is uh, marketing. Um, I use TweetDeck. To help for Twitter because it's a great tool and then Facebook and yada 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 but also as with my zombie t titles I use my podcast podcast zombie radio we all know zombie radio to record that I use um, a piece of software called audacity it's again it's free it's a great tool for multi-track recording and it does a great job for podcasting um, and to record it, I use this baby. I think you can see it. I don't know if it's in shot or not. This is a CAD E100S microphone. It is brilliant for, um, for recording podcasts, but even better, um, because you know that I, I record audiobooks, I use that baby to record my audiobooks into Audacity. Um, and then um, 
export those babies and send them off and blah, 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 and yada, yada, yada. And that is my process. I don't know if I left anything out or not. Maybe. Everything I use is open source with the exception of uh, InSync. I don't think it's open source. But um, writing audio, writing books doesn't have to cost you a lot of money. In fact, it can be free if you're enjoying the Linux operating system. And by using Linux, I can avoid all the standard pitfalls that come along with using Windows, like malware, viruses, those dreaded Windows updates that cause you to wind up losing work that you've spent two, three, four hours working on that day, and then all of a sudden, Windows has got to update. Boom! Oh my God, what am I going to do? Why, oh why am I sticking with Microsoft? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. If you have any questions about uh, migrating yourself over to Linux, send them my way. I'll see what I can do to help you. Um, I have never, in, in almost over 15 years of using the Linux platform, I've never had any problems. Um, but uh, that's what I do. That's what I do. Oh, to record my videos right there, that is a GoPro Hero 3. Hell yeah, it sure is. And up there, two husky LED panels to light on my face. Because you need to see my face. Anyway, that's my process. Those are the tools that I use to do what I do. If you have any questions, send them my way and I will answer them. Thank you, as always, for joining on to the Jack verse. Now, let us see if we can envision New Jack City. And let's see if we can survive the sights and sounds. Moo. Ah.